Okay, today we're going to be looking at hypothesis testing. The sub should have handed out two pink sheets to you guys. Um, these will help you as you go through the videos. So in general, when we're doing a hypothesis test, what we're doing is checking our sample against a known population. So when we do our hypothesis testing, there's four steps, the hypotheses, the conditions, the mechanics, and the conclusion. So I'm going to go through two examples with you today, um, starting with number three. So if you want to go to your packet and go to number three. So it says, a 1996 report from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission claimed that at least 90% of all American homes have at least one smoke detector. A city's fire department has been running a public safety campaign about smoke detectors consisting of posters, billboards, and ads on radio and TV and in the newspaper. The city wonders if this concerted effort has raised the local level above the 90% national rate. Building inspectors visit 400 randomly selected homes and find that 376 have smoke detectors. Is this strong evidence that the local rate is higher than the national rate? So what this is giving us, it's asking us, is there evidence to show that the local rate is higher than the national rate? So it says right now that the national rate is 90%. So this is our norm. So what we're going to do, step one, is the hypothesis. When I do this, this is H sub O. This stands for the null hypothesis. So this means the norm. Now we're talking about proportions, and it's giving us the population. It's saying that the national rate, the population, is 90%. So what I'm going to do is put P equals 0 0.90. So this is saying that we think that the rate should be 90%. The alternative is what we're testing the norm against. So when you're doing alternative hypotheses, you can either use the not equal sign, the less than sign, or the greater than sign. The way you deal with this is you look at what they're asking. So in this case, it's saying, is the local rate higher than the national rate? So I'm going to want to use greater than. So I always, again, I stick with the population. So I'm going to test to see if alternatively the population is greater than 0 0.90. So these are my hypotheses. Then I'm going to start my condition. The conditions for hypothesis testing is the same as the conditions for confidence intervals. So independence. So I would think that this is independent because one house having a smoke detector doesn't affect another house having one. So one home Then we've got our randomization. And be careful, don't just say that uh, the 400 homes should represent all homes. Actually look to see if it says random, which in this case, sorry, in this case it does. It says 400 randomly selected homes. So I'm going to say the 400 homes were selected randomly. Then, we've got the 10% condition. So, I'm going to say that 400 homes, since it's a city, cities are usually larger, so 400 homes is less than 10% 
of all homes in the city. And then my last condition is a success failure condition. Now with a success failure condition, this is a little bit different than the confidence intervals because with the confidence intervals we used p hat and q hat. Here we can use p and q because we have the population. We know that the national rate is 90%. So I'm going to take 400 times 0.9, which is 360. So that's definitely greater than or equal to 10. And then n times q, so 400 times 0.1. So that's 40, which is also greater than or equal to 10. So my next step, just like confidence intervals, is to state my conditions are met to name the model and name the test. So I'm still using a normal model because it's proportions. So what I'm going to say is my conditions are met. So I can use a normal model. To perform, and now here's where it's a little bit different. We're not performing a confidence interval anymore. We're performing a hypothesis test. So we call this a one proportion. Z test. So instead of the interval, it's Z test. Now I can go ahead and I can do the mechanics. Now when I do the mechanics, what I need to list out is the N, the P hat, the P, and the standard deviation. Now remember, confidence intervals we had to use the standard error because we didn't know the population. Since we know the population here, it's 0.9, we find the standard deviation. So my n is 400. My p hat is 376 out of 400. Because if you go back, right, from our sample, sorry, I don't know why it keeps doing that. From our sample, it says that they find that 376 out of 400 have smoke detectors. So I do 376 divided by 400, which is 0.94. This should be P, not P hat. We know that that's 0.9. And then the standard deviation of the sample, we use our population, so 0.9 times 0.1 over 400, and then we take the square root. So when I do that, I get 0 0.015. So I know I'm using a normal model, so I'm going to draw that. My population proportion, that's my mean, so it's 0.9. My sample that I got was 0.94. I'm trying to find the probability that my sample would be greater than 0.94 because we're looking to see if the local rate is higher than the national rate. So I'm going to shade to the right. So I need to find a z-score. So I take the sample proportion, so 0.94, minus the mean, 0.9, divided by the standard deviation, 0 0.015. Then I go ahead and I divide that and I get 2.67. So I am finding the probability that my z-score is greater than 2.67. So I plug it in just like I normally do to normal CDF. So I use normal CDF, 2.67 would be my lower bound, 1,000 would be my upper bound, and I get 0 0.004. Now, 
this right here, we've been doing this, right? We did this in chapter 18. We found out, we compared, right, our population to our sample. This right here, what I got, is technically 0.4%, but this is our p-value. What this says is if the national rate truly were 90%, the probability that I would get a sample like I did is 0.004 or 0.4%. That's very unlikely, unusual. So, what I say in my conclusions, right, this is a little bit different than before because we're testing something. I'm going to say my p-value is low. So that's 0 0.004. Right. So I reject the null hypothesis. Now the reason why I'm rejecting it is because there's such a small chance that I would get a sample like I did if that value really were 90%. So I'm saying that there's something wrong. I don't think that this local rate is actually 90%. I think it's different. I think it's higher. So my p-value is low, so I reject the null hypothesis. So what that means is there is strong evidence to suggest that the local rate is above 90% for smoke detectors. So again, because this p-value is so low, I'm rejecting the 90% rate. So I'm saying that obviously, right, since the chance that we would get a sample of 94% is so small, then yeah, that the, um, the billboards, all of the things that they did, the effort that they made, made a difference, that there is evidence to suggest that the local rate is above 90%. Okay. I'm going to stop this for a second so you have time to go through and copy anything down, rewind the tape, right? And then I will do another video for example four.